So one of the most important changes with the new A-level statistics is that it won't always tell you which hypothesis test to use anymore. So sometimes you have to read the situation that you are given in the question in order to decide what type of hypothesis test best fits the scenario that you are given. So for the binomial distribution to decide whether that's going to be appropriate to use or not, uh, there are four criteria. So there are conditions that have to be satisfied for the binomial model to be appropriate model for a given situation. So they are that we have a fixed number of trials, which is N. We have each trial has two outcomes or a success and failure uh, criteria. For instance, getting a six and not getting a six uh, when rolling a dice. The probability uh, of such must, cont must remain the same. So we've got a constant probability. Uh, so for instance, like I was saying before, getting a six, as long as it's a fair dice where it stays a sixth every time that you roll it, or even an unfair dice, as long as you're rolling the same unfair dice uh, repeatedly in your number of trials. And the trials must be independent of each other, which means that the outcome from one trial cannot then affect the probability of the outcome of the next trial. So you must be able to compare a description of a situation to these four properties that we have here and decide if the binomial model can be used. So we've got some examples. So here, which of the following situations uh, will, will fit the binomial? And if the binomial model does not fit, we have to state which of the properties isn't being met. So we've got here the number of sixes that you get uh, in 25 rolls of a fair six-sided dice. So, do we have the first one, which is a fixed number of trials? Yes, we've got that here, because we're rolling the dice 25 times. The next point that we have to compare it to is the two outcomes. Well, we're only looking at the number of sixes, so it either is a six or it isn't a six, so they're the two outcomes that we're looking at. We need the probability to stay the same while well, we're rolling the same dice uh, and it's a fair dice, so that's fine. And the trials must be independent. Well, when you're rolling a dice, this one we can't really underline anything from the sentence, but we can think about the scenario around it. When we roll a dice, the chance of getting a six doesn't increase or decrease from what the previous answer was. So this one here is... Uh, this does fit the binomial model. Okay, so then for part B, we have the probability of eating all blue M&Ms when picking 10 from a packet. So, first of all, the number of trials must be fixed. Well, we're looking at 10 m and m so we do have a fixed number that we're looking at there must only be two outcomes well they either are blue or it's not blue the probability must remain constant however we are eating these so when we're taking it out we're not going to be putting it back in so that means that then the number of blue M&Ms in the packet is going to decrease. Even if it isn't blue, the number of M&Ms overall is going to decrease, which means then the probability is going to decrease. So this one does not fit. as the probability is not constant um, but also if we think about the trials being independent because we're taking one out if we take a blue one out first let's say that we have three out of ten blue in the packet 
once I've taken one of them out, if it isn't blue that I take out, the probability that the next one is blue, there's still three left in the packet, but this time it's three out of nine or a third. So the probability has increased depending on whether the first one was blue or not. If the first one wasn't blue, and then we're looking at the next one being blue, then, sorry, if the first one was blue, then that means that the chance of the second one being blue is going to be two out of nine. So that's if it's not blue first. So you can see how the first uh, M&M being chosen, if that is or isn't blue, it changes what the probability of the next M&M being blue. So also the trials are not independent. The outcome of one selection affects the outcome of the next. So then uh, for C, we've got uh, counting the number of cars which stop in a cycle box at a set of traffic lights in one hour. Now, the first thing that we're looking for is a fixed number of trials. Here, we have a fixed duration, which is the hour, but we don't say out of the first 20 cars. Now, depending on how busy the traffic is and how many times the traffic lights change, depends on how many trials we're going to have. So here, we, the binomial model does not fit as we do not have a fixed number of trials. Let's see if anything else fits. Two outcomes, well, it either does stop in the cycle box or it doesn't. So there are two outcomes. The next one, the probability remains constant. Again, you could argue that the probability isn't going to remain constant uh, because it might depend on the flow of traffic. We've not talked about anything about the probability of someone stopping in the cycle box. So the probability... may not be constant um, and also they also might not be independent that meaning that if they're looking at an hour where it's rush hour oops sorry saw that wrong um, if you're looking at, say, a rush hour traffic, where you have a lot of cars travelling, they may be more likely to stop in the cycle box because they're not paying attention or they're looking at the lights or whatever. Um, or maybe they're less likely because they're going to be more cyclists on the road, so they're more likely to keep them clear. Um, it's just not clear whether they are going to be independent of each other. Uh, or the time of day that the hour is. So we need to be careful with that. So. I would now like you to pause the video. And give X, Y and Z a go. Remembering the four properties. If it meets all four properties. Then that's fine. It's probably going to fit the binomial distribution. If it doesn't fit all four properties. Which properties does it not fit? So hopefully you've paused the video and you've given the now you try question a go. We'll just go through uh, the answer. So for the first one, we've got the probability of a car parking on the top floor of a car park out of 40 cars. So we've got our fixed number of trials because we're looking at 40 cars. We've got our success criteria. They'll either park on the top floor or they won't park on the top floor. So there's only two outcomes that we're looking at. Um, however... The last two won't be met. So the number of spaces remaining 
on levels, including the top level, may change the probability of them parking on the top floor. And they're not going to be independent because if all the spaces are taken on the top floor or if they're taken on all the other floors apart from the top floor, then that's going to change the chance of someone parking on the top floor. Uh, for the second one, we've got the probability of picking out two socks and then being a matching pair out of a draw of 30 loose socks. So we've got a fixed number of trials. That's the picking two socks. So our number of trials is two. Uh, however, the success criteria changes depending on the choice of the first sock. So actually, we don't only have two possible outcomes. Because if the first sock that we pick out, let's say, is blue, and then we have another choice of sock and that's yellow, that's not a matching pair. But if we have the first one as being green and the second one as being green, that is a matching pair. And then if we had the first one as uh, blue and the second one as blue, that's also a matching pair. So there we have two matching pairs, but they're not the same matching pair. So it's not a set success criteria. We're not looking to see if it is green or if it is blue. We're just seeing if it is a matching pair. Uh, so then, not only that, but the probability changes because we're taking one of the socks out. So as we talked about before with the M&Ms, uh, once we took the first sock, obviously the probability of finding its matching sock is going to change because the overall number of socks is different. And how many there is of that type of sock is going to be different. And also the trials are not independent of each other because whatever the first choice is depends on what the success criteria is going to be for the next one to make it a matching pair. For instance, when we chose a green one first in those examples I've just done down the side, when we chose a green one first, it had to be a green one that we chose second. When we chose a blue one first, it had to be another blue one that we chose second. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a matching pair and so on. So they're definitely not independent of each other. And the last one that we've got is that we're flipping a coin 30 times and counting how many heads. So our number of trials is 30. Our success criteria is that it's a head or it's not a head. Uh, the probability, well, it's the same coin that we are flipping. So even if this coin is biased, because we're flipping the same coin repeatedly, the probability is going to stay the same. And because a coin isn't dependent on its previous outcomes, that means that also uh, it's going to be independent. So that one does fit the binomial criteria. So as I said before, it is very important that you pay attention to whether it is binomial or not binomial and that you get used to uh, having a look for these four criteria because mostly in the exam now it won't tell you the name of the hypothesis test. You will have to choose it yourself. Another important thing about the binomial when we get into doing hypothesis testing, which we're going to come on to next, is that it has to be a random sample. Now, that is a separate thing from these four criteria. So when you're deciding if it is binomial, the hypothesis test that you should be doing, don't start mentioning that it should be a random sample. Have a think about these four criteria. For any hypothesis test that we do in statistics, the data has to be a random sample. Uh, so that is something that's completely separate from the criteria that makes it binomial. So again, for hypothesis testing, it always has to be random. That isn't something that's specific for binomial. So just be careful that if you're trying to decide whether to use binomial or not to use binomial, then you need to think about the four criteria of a fixed number of trials, two outcomes, a fixed probability, and whether the outcomes are independent or not. Thank you very much for listening.